I had an idea for an essay. It would be just the right combination of funny and poignant, maybe a little sad, but not so sad that you would miss the uplifting message at the end. Before I tell you about this idea, one that's been rattling around in my brain for several months, I need to back up and tell you about my son. Wesley is five, almost six. Shortly after his second birthday, he was diagnosed with autism. My son is severely affected. He does not have Sheldon on Big Bang Theory, Asperger style autism. He doesn't have, perhaps he's a little awkward, but he's probably a genius, and did you know Bill Gates is on the spectrum? Autism. He has autism, autism. Nonverbal, not yet potty trained. I recently found him sitting on top of the refrigerator, autism. He's cute and funny and mischievous and most definitely autistic with a capital A. Having a child with a developmental delay means lots of assessments. And each of these assessments involves my filling out some number of standardized questionnaires about Wesley's language, self-help, and other skills. At one point, I'd filled out so many questionnaires that when my husband would ask me a question, I would answer all of the time, some of the time, <laughs> or none of the time. My idea for the essay was this. I was going to take a few of the questions and juxtapose them against the way our life really is. For example, one of my favorite questions was, is your child proud of his or her accomplishments? The first time I saw this question, Wesley was maybe two years old. I laughed at the thought of what possible accomplishments a two-year-old could have. And while today's response would be, well, he did look pretty proud of himself sitting on top of the refrigerator, at the time, the question made no sense to me. With this idea in mind, I went searching for some of the assessment forms. It turns out that not once during any of the seven or eight times I filled these out did I think I should probably make a copy of this. So I Googled and clicked on the first link, which was for the MCHAT, the Modified Checklist for Autism in Toddlers. And what I found astounded me. It started with the familiar page of questions. One, does your child enjoy being swung, bounced on your knee, etc.? Yes. Two, does your child take an interest in other children? Does pulling their hair count? Three, does your child like climbing up things such as upstairs? <laughs> yes. Did I mention he also climbs the fireplace mantle? This version of the checklist also contains several additional pages I had never seen before, instructions for the evaluators. The instructions were in the form of a flow chart, and for each question there was a path that ended in one of two ways, pass or fail. And there it was, in black and white in front of me, proof of my biggest fear validated by a PhD at Georgia State University, I was failing. I am a failure. My goal as a parent has always been to raise children who would be independent adults. But after four years of early intervention and a veritable alphabet soup of therapies, my answers to those questions haven't really changed. My son is still as autistic as he ever was. And with every passing year, though he is certainly making his own progress, it becomes less and less likely that he will become an independent adult. My son will never be the man I imagined him to be. He may never play properly with toys or bring objects to me. He may never even speak. But having a child who is not what I expected, even in very significant ways, doesn't mean I've failed, does it? He certainly hasn't. Wesley is who he is. He was, in the wise words of Lady Gaga, born this way. So why do I still feel this way? Perhaps my failure is one of imagination, of not being able to picture a child with a life so different from my own, from the one I hope to create for my son and his sister. It's time to let that vision go, to let things unfold as they will, it's time to forgive myself for having a child with a disability and accept the things I cannot change. It's not, to not just say the words, but truly believe that our reality is no more a reflection on me than it is on my little boy. Wesley, much like this essay, may not turn out to be exactly how I imagined. We will, however, find unexpected surprises along the way, setbacks and breakthroughs. Our life is and will continue to be funny and poignant, and yes, sad at times. But I'm pretty sure there's going to be an uplifting message at the end.